Well, since everyone's sitting at home chugging liters of hand sanitizer, I figured I'd make this video so you have something else to do with your time. So, this is how I set up my Samsung Galaxy S20, or S20 Plus, or S20 Ultra. <laughs> Alright, jumping into the settings like a junkie on Meth Monday and skipping right past connections in sound and vibrations under vibration pattern, as silly as it is, we've actually got quite a few options, and so I picked Siren because I think it's hilarious. Under intensity, I've got incoming and notifications maxed out because I'm an idiot and never notice when my phone's vibrating unless it's as strong as a pocket rocket. And I have touch set to max because I like a good punch to the finger. Under sound and vibration control, I have everything disabled except for charging sounds because I don't want to sound like a journalist from the 1970s smashing away on a typewriter, but I do want a confirmation tone when I toss my phone on a wireless charger. Under sound quality and effects, both Dolby options are enabled because okay quality audio is fine, but better quality audio is better. They should just come enabled by default, but whatever. I've got equalizer set to normal because I like a flat profile since I don't listen to only one specific genre of music. For separate app sound, I just leave it disabled because I don't think I've ever had a need for it. Okay, backing out of there and hopping into notifications, the top two are enabled because they're handy. App icon badges is disabled because I hate icon badges. I have status bar set to three most recent because I want to know what the hell's waiting for me, but I also don't need the entire bloody thing filled. Battery percentage is also enabled because battery percentage. I mean, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> and then for the apps themselves, I just leave everything default and make tweaks as certain apps start to piss me off. Okay, let's jump into display. First off, shout out to my dark mode gang. Sound off in the comments, hashtag DMG. I've got adaptive brightness disabled because it's just never as bright or dark as I need it when I need it. Under motion smoothness, I'm running at 120 hertz because why buy an obscenely expensive phone with 120 hertz display and not use it? Blue light filters off because I hate it. Uh, screen mode set to vivid because it's either that or boring. Font size and style is all set to default. Same with screen zoom, although that might change as the years go on. <laughs> aging sucks. I've got screen resolution set to full HD plus for two reasons. First, because it's the highest resolution possible at 120 hertz, and second, the pixel density is high enough that everything still looks plenty sharp. The S20 Ultra doesn't look quite as good streaming video as the S20 or S20 plus does, but it's either full HD plus at 120 hertz or QHD plus at half the refresh rate, so that one's up to you guys. Under full screen apps, everything's set to auto. Uh, I've got screen timeout set to 10 minutes, because like I've said in the past, I tend to sit on the toilet for a bit. It's peaceful. For edge screen, I've disabled edge panels. I know some people like it, but it's only ever given me nosebleeds, but edge lighting's pretty sweet, so that stays on. And in case you were curious, I've got the style set to multicolor, which you can actually customize in detail, and I set it to always. Under navigation bar, I've set it to buttons, just because over time, I realize I'm just not a fan of Samsung's take on gesture controls. But moving on, accidental touch protection's enabled, touch sensitivity's disabled, and show charging information's another no-brainer, so that's enabled. Okay, so we're gonna skip past wallpapers and themes because we'll get to that shortly, so let's jump into lock screen. For screen lock type, I've got pin and fingerprints. I don't use smart lock for security purposes. I leave screen lock settings alone, always on display is enabled, and in there, I've got show always selected. Under clock style, I prefer the third from the left and went with the teal color for some reason. I've got show music information enabled. I prefer setting rotate screen to portrait and I enable auto brightness because it's always been way too bright at night when it's on my bedside table and way too dark during the evenings. You know, <laughs> sometimes I can't tell if I'm justified in my complaints or if I'm just being way too anal retentive. Anyways, I don't use any wallpaper services and for clock style, well, we've already dealt with always on display clock and I don't really care about the lock screen clock because like most people these days, I don't spend a lot of time there, so I leave it alone. For face widgets, I disable everything except for music and I have show on always on display enabled so I can see what the hell is playing there too. Contact info I leave blank because I'm not an 80 year old with Alzheimer's yet. Notifications on, and even though I don't spend a lot of time on the lock screen, I disable shortcuts because it looks cleaner, I don't make a ton of phone calls, and if I need to launch the camera, I just double press the power button. Now moving into biometrics and security, I have face recognition turned off. Like you might have a better time with it, but it's always sucked for me. For fingerprints, I register my thumb and index finger. Under biometric preferences, I disable screen transition effect, and I recommend you do the same because it'll feel smoother and snappier. Trust me. Uh, everything else I leave alone. Same thing with privacy. I just leave everything alone unless I need to adjust some permission settings for some potentially shady apps. Uh, we're going to skip right past location, accounts, and Google settings and jump into advanced settings. My absolute favorite settings menu from Samsung, he said sarcastically. So for side key, I have quick launch camera and power off menu selected. Uh, Bixby routines is disabled. Dear Samsung, just stop. Please. Best regards, 
literally everyone. Calling text on other devices is a pretty neat option, but I've never needed or used it. Same thing with link to windows and smart pop-up view. For screenshots and screen recorder options, I have the toolbar enabled. I like to keep my screenshots, so auto delete is disabled. Format set to JPEG and under screen recorder settings, I've got media sounds enabled and set to 1080p. I've disabled direct share because most of the apps I use on a regular basis don't support it. Reduce animations turned on. I'll take anything that smooths out or speeds up Samsung super heavy animations. Under motions and gestures, I've disabled everything except for double tap to wake. I have one handed mode enabled in case I need it and have it set to double tap the home button. Now I very rarely game on phone, so game launch is disabled. I don't need or use dual messenger, so I leave that alone. I stay away from video enhancer. It screws with the display brightness and can oversaturate the shit out of some content, so it's better to just leave it off. I'm a grown ass man, so I don't use any of that digital well-being bullshit. I don't mess with the two or three settings in device care, and I don't really need to do anything anywhere else except for enable developer options and drop all the animation scales to 0.5. From there, I launch Gmail, Twitter, and Instagram, and then open my reasons list and set all three to keep open for quick launching, which is a really handy new feature Samsung's included in one UI version 2.1. Then I pull down the notification shade, hit the menu, jump in a button order, and get rid of all the crap I don't use. Then I tap on quick panel layout and enable both options for easy access. Now as far as themes, I didn't find anything in Samsung's theme store like this time, so I used an app called Dope Walls and downloaded the wallpaper you're seeing now. Unfortunately, <laughs> the app's been poorly thought out, so there's no wallpaper names or any way to share a link, so I just uploaded it to my drive account for you guys. Link will be in the video description. I'm also using Nova Launcher Pro so I can use custom icons, and because I have a restore file I've saved over the years with specific home screen grid dimensions and swipe folders, which I'll have another link for if you guys wanted the same layout. The icon pack I'm using is called Vibrant. It'll cost a couple of dollars, I think, but it's a pretty unique icon pack, so I just had to have it. And I think that's it. Like, I'm sure I missed a thing or two because there's just so much to go over, but I think I covered at least 99% of everything I do. So hopefully this took your mind off your addiction to hand sanitizer for a while and spiffed up your phone a bit. Anyways, as always, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, maybe show me some love with that like button. Subscribe if you're new to my stuff and don't forget to follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to next. But thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Cheers.